Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, Breakwell. And in that corner, ignored by Millions, Steve Dodge, Rinko Levi. Everybody, and welcome back to Wrong and Wronger. Our summer vacation is over, and we have to return to the drudgery of each other. I'm Dr. Steve, Steve Olivas, and that cat over there ain't a cat at all. He is a unicorn. James the Exploding Unicorn Breakwell. And James, after a week off, tell me you missed me. You know, you're actually off by a week. Our week off was the week before that one. You're, you're confused, because we actually released an episode last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, that's, <laughs> well, all this is your fault one way or the other, <clears throat> although I can't help but thinking it's your fault. Well, I mean, I didn't get it done, but to be fair, you sent me the files and they were messed up because you've got a <laughs> call in the middle of it somehow, it wrecked everything, <laughs> and maybe I could have got it in time, but like the mental gymnastics I was going to have to do to figure out how to splice together all those files and knowing I was going to have to listen to your voice the whole time I was doing it, it really, it yeah. really just killed my motivation, but yes, I guess by the timeline we did have a week off where we didn't record but there was an episode that came out because of the yeah anyway i get what you're saying there nobody were, else does that's okay there were two people who noticed that we were not on yeah two weeks ago. and they tagged us both we we were both very aware of those two people <laughs> it was by far the biggest outpouring of listeners we oh, have ever had I was touched and not in a weird way. Well, this is the podcast where we argue about things that don't matter to anybody except us two, Judy P, and now a fourth person who I don't even know what their name is, but thank <laughs> goodness for that. We grew by 100%. And James, the topic we are going to debate today comes from a, a, a phrase that you had as we were preparing and by we, I mean you, were preparing late, might I add, to do the podcast <laughs> today. You uttered the phrase, suspicious underwear. And I thought, I don't know that I've heard those two words together before. But what are we arguing today? Yeah, when you have small kids in the house, there are many suspicious underwear <laughs> all over the place. We are arguing boxers versus briefs. Normally, I spend 10 seconds scrolling through our old episodes to make sure we have not argued something. This time, I asked Steve to do it while I was dealing with the suspicious underwear. He refused. So if this is our <laughs> second time debating this, I apologize. But I'll be more than happy to win again. Heck, if we hadn't done paper versus plastic, surely we couldn't have done boxers versus briefs. This seems like the kind of topic I would have strayed away from back when I had standards, and now anything <laughs> goes. So you know what? Let's just do it. I have broken you down to Olivas level. Well, before we do it, we have to exchange compliments. And James, this is really the only reason I come back week after week is because I'm beaten down by life in every other avenue. But here I get a compliment and I feel I feel alive. Is it all right if I if I give you two compliments? <laughs> James Breakwell, I'm getting the vapors. I just, of course it I'm is. just afraid if I don't say this now, I'm going to totally forget about it. Because as soon as these podcasts end, I purge it through from my mind. <laughs> So first, I, I want to uh, I want to compliment for you for for just rolling with it, no matter how weird the text messages are that I sent you, because I sent you a text that I definitely meant for my father-in-law about some <laughs> screws on the back of my the back of my license plate, and he's actually close enough to help me. He's not in Nashville, and I sent and he has skills. I don't know if I, I'm assuming you have. Well, your wife has skills. I know that. I don't know if you ever fix anything or not. But yeah, I sent it out and like. Then you replied, and I realized I sent this to the completely wrong person. So I was asking you for life advice on how to install a license plate, and you just replied. You just went right into dad mode and sent it through, no questions asked. Um, so I'm sure that was weird for both of us, but I'm, I'm glad your, your screening process is not more diligent. <laughs> well, the text you sent, I don't remember the exact wording, but... It sort of hit me as, well, it's unusual that you wouldn't give some kind of prelude to asking a mechanical question. <laughs> like, uh, that's not something we do, but I thought, well, all right, what the hell? And I just gave you an answer. And then you rolled with it right back I because you said something back to me. 
Well, I think we were both deeply uncomfortable with that situation. And at that point, we were just too far in to do anything about it. So, so yeah, so that, that, that's what happened last weekend. And I, I still feel a little dirty about it. And then the other compliment I want to give yeah. you, which is pretty yeah. close to a real compliment, I want you or I want you to know I admire your parenting. You have pulled off the dream of every mom and dad out there. You figured out I how do? to get your, your kid, your last kid, out of the house before they turned 18. <laughs> You have achieved a perfect, flawless parenting victory. Please do tell. Yep. <clears throat> now, uh, Mrs. Steve, not quite as excited <laughs> about this as uh, she has teared up a couple times thinking about saying goodbye to the boy. But he will be going off to school in the Northeast to play hockey in probably four weeks, maybe okay. five weeks. So he'll be back. For Thanksgiving and Christmas and probably spring break. But yeah, it's a dress rehearsal for empty nesting we're going to get. And it's going to be hard for me too. As much as you malign your children, James Breakwell, when the last, well, hell, when the first one leaves, when daughter went to college, it was hard hugging her at the dorm when I'm dropping her off. It's like, man, that's a rough go. And now the last kid leaving, it's it's not as easy as it sounds. Let me put it that way. Well, it's it's so, so far in the future for me that uh, I'm just going to leave it as a fantasy. And I'm not going to let you rain on that parade. What are you going to do with the thousands of dollars you save a week on food? Well, it's probably going to pay for his school oh. and living there. and. I mean, he still has to eat up there, but... <laughs> have to pay for somebody yeah, else to cook it I, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he'll be living with a host family up there. It's not a boarding school he's going to, so they don't have dorms. So we do have to pay a monthly stipend to help offset the food cost. I don't know that anybody can truly anticipate what it means when a 16-year-old athlete moves into your home, <laughs> but... Uh, do they have Culver's in Indianapolis? Yes, it started in Wisconsin and migrated its way yeah. down this way. All right, we have two in Middle Tennessee. He had three double butter burgers the other, other day, and uh, I had one and I felt sick because I was so full. He had three, and by the time we drove home 25 minutes, he was ready to eat again. Oh. It's going to be a disaster for whoever welcomes him into their home, James. But. Not my problem anymore. You are correct, oh, sir. You, you, you're going to get me completely sidetracked now. We're never going to get to this debate. But I, I can't help. But here I was setting you up to the, 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 the eats these huge quantities of food. I don't think we've ever talked about this before. But I'm on the, the carnivore diet. I do one yeah. meal a day. You want to know how many quarter pound burgers I eat in one meal? Hold on. I, mm, I, can I get? I think I know the answer. Go for it. Now, by burgers, you mean patties. Patties, you don't eat, just like, the patties. There's and, no bun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, plus or minus one, I would say eight. Twelve. I do. Oh, you eat three pounds. I eat three pounds. I, I was eating two pounds and then tw uh, two pounds of beef and then 12 eggs, but the eggs took up too much room in my stomach. I decided to switch to three pounds of beef, and I'm still kind of hungry, so I think today I'm going to test out three and a half and see how that goes. So <laughs> I, was, I was very impressed with your son, but now that you're telling me three burgers, I'm thinking maybe just your, your understanding of how much human beings eat might be skewed a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to say what the buns do because it was that's, so if they're a quarter true. pound each, that's a pound and a half plus six halves of buns. Oh, they were half pounds each. Okay, well that's a little more respectable. Well, I think they're quarter pound hamburgers, aren't they? Well, quarter pound. I if you have if you have are. three quarters of a pound, that would that would be three quarters of a pound, not a pound and a half. No, no, but he had three of them. Three a quarter pound, two of them per burger. Okay, I, I, I missed the burger, double part burgers. there. Okay, I'm back with yeah. you. Burger math anyway. is tricky. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for this episode of Burger <laughs> Math. We'll catch you next week. <laughs> I don't. So do you feel like you're topped off when you have three pounds of meat in your stomach? I did in recent weeks, but like this week, I've, I've still kind of felt hungry. So I'm going to just increase it up and see how much I can keep shoveling in there. Are you still losing or are you maintaining? Oh, I'm gaining. I'm going up. I'm One of these days, I'm going to be so broad, I'm not even going to fit in this webcam. And then I'm just going to end this podcast. <laughs> that'll, that'll be my triumph. When I, when, I am too, when I am too bulky to fit on the screen, I am officially done with oh, podcasting. You lost an S ton of weight, my friend. So I didn't know if you were just trying to figure out what your equilibrium point was or if you wanted to gain There's, a little back. You, 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 know, you, you know my life has no balance. I'm either going up or going down. So we're going to try to go up in the right. 
right way, I'll hit the gym and see what happens. But yeah, that's that's the goal right now. But I'm not 16. So your mm -hmm. son's in the spot where anything that he throws into his body, fat, carbs, pure sugar, it just you know it just turns into muscle automatically. He is in life in easy God. mode. I am in life. I remember those in uh, you know 35 year old man mode, where if I eat anything that's not protein, <laughs> it just it destroys me. So yeah, we're, we're we're trying to figure this out step by step. Well, as long as we're going on burger math, I'll tell you this. He uh, got a job pushing carts at Walmart. So he goes to the lot, gets the mm -hmm. carts, pushes them back in. He walks between 10 and 13 miles a shift, wow. and he has lost 13 pounds over the last two weeks. Wow. Even though he eats as much as he possibly can. That's insane. It is sick can how 16-year-old boy bodies work. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's irritating. Is he, is he still getting taller? He's uh, probably, I don't notice because I see him every day. Now, mom puts like a thing on the wall, oh. so I haven't checked that lately. He probably is a little bit, but he's, uh, they skate every morning for hockey and he's working at Walmart in the afternoon, burning calories, and I'm talking to you on the phone. Well, I guess this episode will be a true test of whether or not our two listeners tune in to hear us argue <laughs> or to hear us talk about nothing, because this episode is a whole lot of one. I have to give you your compliment. Hold on. <laughs> And it piggybacks on your first compliment to me because, honestly, I had forgotten about that text exchange. You're right. I went into dad mode. My daughter will do that. She, uh, like, broke her key off in the lock of her apartment, asked me what to do about it. So I walked her through that. But you have taken your lazy game to a level what? that is unprecedented in the annals of history, James Breakwell. And I don't say that lightly because I know you take a lot of pride in your lazy approach to life. That uh, you have standards that uh, I don't want to call you out in front of your friends. I don't know that you have a lot of friends, James. <laughs> I'm one of your best friends, and we don't even like each other, so let's put it that way. But you, in your newsletter, I can't believe a male would actually write this with any shred of self-respect. You ordered two screws online to be delivered to your house? Yeah. No, it was four screws, first of all. Second of all, they, they oh, never geez. arrived. And when actually a different package arrived to something I didn't order, but it was really, it was weird. But a anyway, uh, I was leaving. I was leaving that night. It was Thursday night. We were leaving the next morning at 7 a.m. I was not going to be in town at any point when an auto parts store was opened. And I thought if I order these screws, they will be sitting here waiting for me when I get back Sunday night, also when auto parts are st stores are closed so i can complete this whole thing without ever having to have the stores open that was that was my goal and then once i ordered it and then it disappeared i had to wait because i already paid for this once and i did end up having to go to the auto parts store so there was there there was a logic to it if i could have driven to the store that thursday night i would have but i it wasn't open so that was that was how i got stuck you went to minnesota is that correct yes the last I checked, and it's been a few, uh, probably a year and a half since I've been there. They had like Home Depots, Lowe's, True Value, Ace Hardware. Yeah. They have stores in Minnesota. But I was in the other van. So my van is the evil van. We don't take that van interstate. That van dry, oh, drives me too much. You could have taken a risk. So, so you want me make? to take my entire family laden down with supplies and say, hey, guys, <laughs> We're going to take a quick detour so I can get two screws that I'm going to use two days from now. The time to run errands is not when you have a car full of cranky kids. Also, we made it from Indianapolis to Minneapolis with only one stop. One stop for bathroom break and gas. That was it. There were no screws there. That would have added a second stop, and that would have totally destroyed the pride of our accomplishment. So no, Steve, that is definitely a no-go. James, I'm going to talk slow so I don't blow my aneurysm <laughs> while I'm speaking to you, but you went to somebody's house. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume they have a car. Okay. I don't know if you're walking through this what with do me, you, James. Okay, just, just real quick. What do you think we do when we get to Minnesota? Do you think we sit around sober? Like in a state <laughs> where we can drive a vehicle away from there? Is that what you think happens there? <laughs> Surely... Surely you're up at 9 a.m. wandering around in slippers and underpants and you're not drunk yet. They are way, I would, that would have been so far out of there, way out there in the country. I just, 
it would have been a whole thing. I would have had to have been sober. I would have had to, it would have been like a 35 minute round trip to get those screws. And knowing what I know now, I would have bought the wrong ones anyway. And then I wouldn't have been able to return them because I'd be back in Indianapolis with the screws and the screws would have to go back to the store in Minneapolis. There are so many problems. What? Just buy two of a whole bunch of them, and if you lose a buck and a half in the transaction, James, I will send you the dollar and a how half. How much do you think? Let me know. How much do you think car screws cost? This isn't 1925 James, anymore. These are panhead screws. Like you they don't are, have to get specialty screws. They are specialty screws. They're made to be out there in cars and rust away and they not get stuck. There. What my screw previous screws do is exactly what was not supposed to happen. It just occurred to me now that 99% of the two people listing have no idea what we're talking about. Just for some <laughs> pointless background on this, I had two screws in the back of my license plate and I had to replace them. I snapped them both off. They were stuck. I had to put screws in the bottom instead. I didn't have screws and it became a whole big ordeal that I wrote a thousand words about in the latest newsletter. We are actually <laughs> over time without actually getting to the topic. So I think we're going to flip the coin. We're going to each make <laughs> one statement and we're going to call it and we're just going to see what happens. What do the two sides represent for you, heads, Mr. I'm going to make a 27 cent online order? Heads, I'm arguing uh, boxers. Tails, I'm arguing briefs. Hey, by the way, I brought a Guam quarter with me because we set this up ahead of time. So I have <laughs> time to prepare. All right, heads is boxers, tails is briefs. It is up, it is down, and it is tails. You have briefs. Okay, well, I will keep this brief. Briefs keep everything nice and secure. If you're an athlete, you want things held where they are supposed to be. You don't want things bouncing around, causing problems in harm's way. You just need to be secure, and that's what briefs do. They give you the stability and the comfort to perform at your best, whether you are playing basketball or you know fighting impossible screws in the back of your license plate. That's what they're there for. And they don't have to just be those those horrible man panty type things. You can get boxer briefs. They're very man stylish. Panty. If you look at all the all the really cool, good looking male models, they're the ones wearing the boxer briefs. They're not wearing these these baggy, you know, sitcom underwear that you see when the clown gets to pants. No, they're wearing they're wearing sleek stuff that high, highlight the male silhouette. So if you want to have <laughs> sex appeal, if you want to have comfort, if you want to have mobility, uh, briefs are the way to go. Especially the boxer brief kind. James, Go ahead. I realize you're an English major, but I didn't realize you had that much difficulty counting to one. <laughs> so we're, we're going to go over. I'm going to have an abacus sent to your house, probably through the mail, because I know you can't get to a store anywhere. Uh. But boxers get, make everything nice and light and airy and loose, and they allow you to have children that you'll eventually want out of your house. And now we've gone all the way full circle, and we can close this thing. So I'm going to shut it down. James has a whole thing going on in the background that's going to erupt into some break well screaming in a second. So I will let him hang up when I'm done. This is Dr. Steve. We Steve need numbers. Numbers. Oh, crap on a <laughs> stick. Yeah, what are the numbers? All right, if you want to vote after this extensive debate, if you want to vote for me <laughs> and briefs, vote for 25. If you want to vote for whatever Steve was arguing, I think boxers, vote for 36. If you want to throw your vote away like we threw away this entire podcast, vote for <laughs> number one. Oh, no, that's number nine. James is going to have trouble with that one, so you better not put that down. All right. Breakwell 25, Olivas 36. If you throw your vote away, James won't know what that number is anyway. And until next week, this is Steve Olivas, Dr. Steve for James the Exploding Unicorn. Breakwell saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for supporting the show. Now two of our viewers. And until next week, always remember two wrongs can make a right.